Kia ora, internet. Welcome to part two of block one of the community round robin quilt along. Hopefully you've already watched Brenda's video, which is part one of this block. I really enjoyed making the birdhouse blocks. They were a lot of fun, especially because I was having fun with fussy cutting some little owls to sit in the windows of the birdhouses. That was fun. And now I'm going to show you a border you can add to your birdhouses. My border design was inspired by a border I saw on sunflower stitcheries and quilting, but I've made a few changes to her design. To make this border you're going to need two contrasting background fabrics. Now if you've got enough left of the fabric that you used for the background on the birdhouse block, that's going to have the best effect. But if you don't, just use something that's similar in colour and tone. You're also going to need two feature fabrics. Ideally each will have good contrast with each other and with the two backgrounds. The first thing I want to do is make the centre block a bit bigger. Right now it's six and a half inches square, but I want to make it eight and a half inches because that's going to make the maths easier and that's always a good thing. Now I could just add one and a half inch strips all the way around to add those two inches but there's already some background up above the birdhouse and there's none below so if I add the same amount of border on each side that's going to make the birdhouse look a little bit low in the block so instead I'm going to add a one and a quarter inch strip at the top and a one and three quarter inch strip at the bottom. Don't worry about all these measurements because they're in the pattern which is linked in the description below. Next step we'll make some hourglasses. We're going to need four three and a half inch squares from the two background fabrics plus another two three inch squares from the second background and we're going to need five three and a half inch squares from both of the feature fabrics. Now the trick to these is going to be getting all the colour placements right so make sure you're paying careful attention to the combinations of colours I'm using here. For now set aside the two three inch squares and one each of the feature fabric squares. Those are going to make the corner blocks which we'll deal with later. So now you want to match each set of background squares with a set of feature fabrics. And then we're going to make some half square triangles using the two at a time method. So mark a line corner to corner on one of your blocks and sew a quarter of an inch on either side of the line. I've done that now so I can cut along that line I drew and I've got two half square triangles. Now repeat that with the rest of the pairs. It's not really necessary to trim the blocks at this stage, but it might make it easier if you do. So trim the half square triangles down to three inches. Now you could use a tool like block lock to do that, but you can also do it with just an ordinary ruler. Find the 45 degree line on your ruler and lay that on the seam. Then slide the ruler so that the three inch lines on both sides are just inside the block. Now you can trim the top two edges, then turn the block and line those cut edges up on the three inch marks. Make sure your 45 degree line is still along the seam and then trim the other two edges. And you should now have a nice three inch square with the diagonal of your half square triangle perfectly along the diagonal of the block. Once you've trimmed all your half square triangles, take one of each color set and lay them right sides together with the seams going in the same direction. But this is important. You need to make sure that the two background fabrics are on opposite sides. Then you're going to draw a line at right angles to the seams and sew a quarter inch on either side. Now before you cut them apart just double check that when you open up the hourglass you've got the two backgrounds opposite each other and the two feature fabrics opposite each other. You'll notice that the two hourglasses end up mirror images of each other. We're going to be making use of that feature so I'd suggest sorting them into two piles. Trim the hourglass blocks to two and a half inches square. So again you can do that by lining up your 45 degree line with a seam and then use the intersections of the measurement lines to give you another 45 degrees that you can line up on the other seam. Check that the intersection of the two seams on your block is where the one and a quarter inch lines cross on your ruler. For the corner blocks you're going to make two half square triangles from those feature fabric squares that you set aside and then trim them to three inches square. Then pair each of those half square triangles with a three inch square of the second background. Draw a line that's at right angles to the seam and you know the drill by now, sew a quarter inch seam on either side. And again you're going to get two blocks that are mirror images of each other. Trim them to two and a half inches square and now we can finally start laying out our border. The border is going to have four hourglass blocks on each side. 
and they're all going to have that first background pointing in towards the birdhouse. This is where the mirror images come in. If you alternate between the two reflections, then the same fabrics will be next to each other, which is going to give the illusion of floating squares on point. Carry on that pattern of matching the feature fabrics on the corner squares, and keep going around the whole block, always making sure that the first background is on the inside, and that the fabrics match where the blocks touch. Once you've got it all laid out, sew the hourglasses together to make the sides and the top and bottom, and then attach them to the birdhouse. The final step is to add a one inch strip of the second border all the way around to really cement that illusion of the feature fabrics floating in the space between the backgrounds. I just really love the effect it gives. So here's my three borders. I chose to use the same backgrounds on all three, but I used different feature fabrics. This was the first block I made to test out the pattern before I filmed this, and this is why I changed the widths on those top and bottom inner borders. I didn't do it on this block, and you can see how the birdhouse looks like it's sitting very low in the block. I suppose I could go back and rip out the seams and correct it, but I think I'm actually going to just leave it as it is, because it's part of the story of how I designed this border. Now you know me, I like working scrappy, and this is not really a scrappy border, but I've been thinking about how you could make it scrappy. One approach would be to pick really distinct colour families for each of the four fabrics, and then when you're laying out the block, not worry too much that you aren't matching exact fabric, just match the colours in the floating squares. I think you'd lose some of the floating illusion, but it probably would still work. Another way, if you wanted to make sure you kept that illusion, is that you could individually cut triangles to construct the hourglasses, and that way you could lay it out and make sure that all of the same fabrics were going to match all the way around. If any of you decide to try making a scrappy version, let me know how it turns out. I'd really love to see it. I can't wait to see what Kelly adds next. Make sure you check out her video next week. The link to her channel will be in the description below, along with a list of dates for the rest of the quilt along. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment. And I will see you next week over on Kelly's video. Kakite anō internet. <laughs>